everyone. Hi, Robin. Hi, Heidi. I'm going to try something different today. I'm going to try actually not wearing my glasses. We'll see how that works. I um, made my font big, so hopefully I'll do okay with it. If not, we'll put them back on. So we would like to start today with a viewer question. Um, and that question has to do with Athena and the group. And um, her question want, is starting off with who are the entities how many are there that's her first question uh, this is a question that uh we don't get all that often surprisingly uh you think people would ask us this more often uh originally uh we began with a smaller group that is now expanded to a larger group uh let's tell you that yes and we would tell you in the early days of robin beginning to channel uh, they were like this one, whoever's asking the question. Uh, at, she was asking, who are you? What are your names? Yes, because this is your human form. This is the way that uh, your construct or the way that you live is. So you, in order in your human mind to understand something, you want to be able to put a title upon it, name it, you see. We have explained in prior uh, recordings that the name uh, Athena, we will give you that one, yes, uh, has come from uh, the Greek goddess of Athena, who is a representation really of a woman in her power, a woman who is... Uh, uh, born of the forehead of Zeus. It is a uh, mythology, uh, Greek mythology, yes. But this is really an analogy of uh, a woman who is uh, powerful as a man. And Robin, uh, in a lack of confidence, called out to the universe to have more confidence. And this is the energy uh, uh, that was returned to her or the stream of consciousness that she tapped into uh, in order to supply her with that feeling of confidence that she was asking for. You see, we're not going to go into naming each and every one of the energies that have joined us here today because we are in oneness. And when we are in oneness, uh, all that are contributing merge together. And then we invite the high part of you. If we are in an individual session, that high part of you will also join uh, this group of energies that is moving through Robin. And together, uh, they will provide you a service of where you will be able to unravel, uh, where you will be able to uh, uh, see yourself with new eyes, uh, hopefully. Yes. And this is how it works works. Uh, every uh, session that we have is a little bit different depending upon the human we are moving with. And why is that? Because that energy of them comes through. If they are in an energy that is of denial, if they are in an energy that is stuck somewhere in depression or uh, obsession, whatever it is, maybe they're really happy, maybe they're really relaxed. That's going to be reflected in the uh, smooth transition or the not so smooth uh, transmission that we are having with them. So that's kind of how it goes. That gives you a little bit of an idea. We are never going to explain uh, exactly what we are, uh, who we are, and where we are in a term that a human can understand. We would ask you, uh, who are you? Uh, where did you come from? And how did you get here? And all you could say is, I was born of my mother. Well, where did that come from? Yes, now you're down the rabbit hole with the rest of us. You come from all that is. We come from all it is. We have access uh, to each other's uh, consciousnesses. So it doesn't matter whether we have had a life or not had a life. We've got privy to life. We know everything. We can feel everything of a human has ever experienced. We can see everything they have ever done. We become one with anything that we want to become one with, you see. So as you ask, ah, have you all been human? Uh, to some sense, we have, because we have this uh, ability that we can feel, that we can sense, and we can know uh, exactly what it is to be a human. So never worry about us understanding where you're coming from. We know, yes, we can feel you. We are there with you. We are united with you. And you, part of you, is united with us, you see. So we would like you to just get the understanding. We're not all that different than you. Uh, and part of you is over here with us, you see. Okay. And just the real quick last part to that question, which you may have already answered was, are you responding collectively or individually? We are responding collectively uh, and mm -hmm. dependent upon the person we are moving with. And sometimes they are responding uh, through the collective, but it is more them uh, or their, uh, what they are wanting to transmit to themselves. Let's use that term. So <clears throat> we are all uh, having input but we are merging our consciousnesses together. And then also the one that is having the session, they will be present too, you see. And so it is a combination of all of these things together that are uh, giving the human the meeting that they are asking for. 
Okay. Well, thank you. Hopefully that answers our viewer's question. Well, we know that it's not probably going to satisfy her uh, 100%, but uh, what we are telling you is there is no uh, way, even if we were to sit here and name names, yes, uh, talk about past lives, uh, it would be no different really than you naming all your past lives and talking about them. Some of you can remember them, some of you can't remember them, but it's of no consequence or no benefit to a human to spend our time uh, on this topic. We don't see that it is uh, providing a service that will create betterment in their life, be uplifting to them in any way other than to uh, satisfy some kind of a curiosity. And as we have said from the beginning, we are not here for entertainment value. We are here to educate and we are here to grow humans and we are here to connect them to the high part of themselves so that we can do this. Okay. All right. Thank you. So the last two podcasts that you put out um, had to do with um, doing things like a master. Um, and not pitying people and more coming from the standpoint of empowerment. So I'm just going to touch on a little bit of what was discussed in those podcasts and starting with there are those out there that believe um, they have a negative attachment. Um, in the podcast, you said we're never going to deny the truth that someone experiences. But can you explain to us how the negative attachment um, kind of becomes a reality in their life, um, how they attract that to begin with, if they're attracting or experiencing something like that. Yes. Uh, uh, anything negative, really, that comes to you in your life is based upon a fear uh, or a lack of control or, or the idea that something can be placed upon you that you are not in agreement to or not wanting. And we are here to tell you today, as we have always told you, that you are the one that determines that. You are the decider, the picker, the chooser of everything uh, that will be part of your experience. And as a human uh, uh, starts to know about uh, otherworldly entities or being, uh, there is an imagination that a human has, yes, and as a human imagine a human, uh, as they have imagining, they are creating or uh, starting the process of form or beginning to form, yes? And so then uh, other people uh, read this information or get this newfound information, and then others start to align to it. And what happens is we start to create uh, a form of consciousness or uh, a level of consciousness. Let's get that term, yes? Uh, we have talked in the podcast, maybe you will get to it, maybe you will not, uh, about uh, sickness being a flow of consciousness or a level of consciousness that one drops into uh, based on where they have set their dial or where their uh, radio station is tuned into or how they've been thinking and feeling for an extended period of time is what will align you to certain things or consciousnesses uh, in your life, you see. And it is the same for these negative energies. Uh, everything is a flow of consciousness. And as you believe in something, as you put your focus on it, and as you send out energy and fear, you are now dropping yourself into that stream of consciousness where you have privy to or are exposed to uh, the things that you're really not wanting, you see. So we said it doesn't matter whether something exists or not exists. It is not what we are here to uh, dispute today. But what we are going to tell you is that if you don't put your thinking uh, in the gutter, you're not going to get in the gutter. So you are to try your best. And we know that there is contrast upon the human plane and that you can't always do this. But if you can keep your focus uh on feeling good, on trying to look for things that generate a good feeling in you, because this is uh, your communication from your source, letting you know, I'm with you, I align to that, I like what you're doing, yes. And then as you get fearful and afraid, some humans will think, well, I'm fearful and afraid because I should be. That's not what it is. Uh, your negative emotion is for you, about you. It's between you and you. It's letting you know the way you're thinking right now, the way you are afraid, the way you are separating from me, your source, and I'm sending you this negativity feeling to let you know that I don't agree with you. That's all I it is. It's, it's communication between you and you, you see, and you have complete control over it. Your focus is everything. You have the ability to pick, to choose, and to be the master. The master experiences uh, all things in its human form, but it doesn't become those things. It doesn't become the experience. It decides to pick and choose what it will feel, what it wants to emanate as a source, not as a human in its fear state, you see. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You also discussed um, a bucket list and not the bucket list that we think um, of as humans. Um, and you kind of went into a little bit of more depth about if we have one bucket that is negative or a low vibratory state that we're putting a lot of energy and effort in that direction, um, it can spill over and mess up our good buckets. Yes. 
So let's talk about that a little bit. Uh, yeah, everything has a tipping point. Uh, think about it, really. Uh, if you're in a marriage or a relationship, there can be lots of fighting going on from day to day. But at some point, you get your belly full. You reach the tipping point, we call it. And that's what we would say. When a human is in negativity that they cannot leave, that no matter how they try to put their focus on another bucket that would make them feel better, but they are not able to do it, you've reached tipping point. What is a tipping point? Tipping point is something's coming in form very soon. You are close to it. It's going to happen. This is your notification or your signal from all that is. You're in trouble. Yes. And so as you are stuck here, uh, that energy is now looking to expel itself. It is overflowing. It's ready to create. It's coming out. Yes. It's like a baby being born. It's going to come. You see. So we want you to understand that when you have this situation, when maybe you are to the tipping point, maybe you are on the edge of creation of something you are not wanting and you can't get yourself off of it, uh, you have to try to soothe yourself. And how do you do that? By understanding how you got there. Go back into the life experience. Talk to yourself a little bit about it. Explain to yourself. It's understandable. Uh, someone isn't speaking to you. Uh, your husband isn't exactly what you had hoped for. You had these other desires that are not being met. Whatever it is that you can back yourself out of this garage that you've gotten into is what you're going to have to do to try to reverse that energy. Because just putting your mind on something else not working. When form is about to form, you have to really get creative on unforming before it happens. And this is the way we would tell you to do it. Soothe yourself, ease yourself, uh, realize that you are close to something, have a recognition, tell yourself, ah, oh, this, this doesn't, this is nothing that I have to be afraid of. This is nothing that I have to be worried about. I just have to sit up and take notice here that the reason I can't get out of this is because it's close to form. It's almost a solid. It's not a thought anymore. Now it has become solid something to reckon with. But you still can, you see. You can ease your way back out. You can understand how your human feels as it does. You can tell it, you get it, you understand it. I'm with you. I hear you. Yes. As you do this, you will start to slow that energy down and you will feel uh, the negativism start to decline within you. And if you keep doing this, you'll get to the point where you can lift your focus off that negative bucket and put it onto something you are wanting. Mm -hmm. This is mastery. This is intentional creating. Mm -hmm. It's yeah. important to learn to do it. Yeah. Um, sometimes when I go into, like, <laughs> say, a very negative bucket, um, I can experience moments or hours or maybe a day or two where I just think, I can't put my focus on anything good. This is all I can do is focus on this garbage. And yes. it's very difficult. And I think what you said, soothing is a good thing. Yes. Um, another thing that I think would be wonderful, and I think you guys would agree, is if you can't do it, um, get yourself in a new environment, like either get out of the house and go do something to distract yourself that way or you know, go out of town for the weekend or do something to um, kind of shake up the routine that'll also help get you moving out of it. Yes, it's true. Yes. Uh, laughter is the best medicine uh, that one can ever find. Uh, sometimes it's too far out of reach uh, to get to that point. But we like your idea of changing the environment, of uh, moving some someplace, uh, actually getting together with someone that you enjoy being with uh, that is uplifting to you is another uh, way to sh uh, shift the energy. We did another podcast that we really like the analogy of, Heidi. We don't know whether you heard it. Uh, it was a little bit about Dave uh, and his struggles and mm -hmm. his well -being. Yeah. And life is a lot the same way. You're going to be going through a lot of different material here on the earth plane. Uh, sometimes Dave would go out and drill and he'd say, I'm in the sand today, honey. Uh, the pipe is just flying down. It's going down like butter. Uh, and every time I drill a foot, uh, I'm making money and it is very easy to do. Uh, he can do other things while he is even doing it. And uh, it's just going by itself, you see. Mm -hmm. And then other times he gets on a job site and he sets up the drill rig and ka-clunk. He hits the rock and... It's very hard pan, hard going, very difficult. He can't rev the engine up. He can't push the pipe because if he does, he's going to break something. And he just has to resign himself to the fact that this particular time is going to take a long time and that he has to slow down the energy. Here it is again. He's got to back himself out of that garage. He's got to recognize I'm not in the sand today. I'm not going to make a lot of money and I'm not going to go very fast. But what I am going to do 
is just chip away. Mm -hmm. chip away. Yes. I'm going to keep going in the direction. Like we said, back out of the garage, chip away. Yes. I'm going to back away from this thing and go ease it down. And I'm going to know it's going to take longer. And I'm going to know I'm going to have to soothe myself into waiting a little bit more and not being impatient. But it's recognizing what you're drilling through. What are you in right now? And your uh, idea of switching environments is a good one because it, you can move yourself out of the hard pan into something a little softer, we would tell you. So we like this idea. We think it is a good tool that you could use, but you also have to become adept at recognizing uh, what material you're in, what are you struggling with? Uh, this is never going to stop. We have told you, you're always going to want more. You're always going to grow more. You're always going to be experiencing this expansion and deciding whether you're going to keep up with it or not. Yes. But um, as you become this master and you can become it, uh, it's not that you will not feel a negative emotion. You will, but you'll feel it with new eyes. You'll feel it with the recognition that it too can have creative value, provided you don't uh, stay in it, provided you don't uh, become the human and think that you are now this experience that doesn't feel good. And therefore, this is how you are going to present yourself to the world. You came here uh, as a sovereign being. You came here as a source, a creator, uh, to show yourself what you look like in form when you are in alignment, you see. And when you are in detachment from yourself, you are uh, presenting your human to the world. And as you know, your human uh, in its tool it's capable of all kinds of things that it's not happy with, uh, that it's in judgment of, and it doesn't provide you the satisfaction that you get when you implement this high part of yourself to allow it to govern the tool. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. What would you say to someone who feels like they've shifted hot to a high vibratory level? Um, they've held something in a good feeling place for a while, and they think their stuff should be arriving soon, at all their manifestations and it doesn't happen and they start to just think oh, this doesn't work i've lost hope i've done this for how long i feel really good i've been in a good place why isn't this working for me someone as you have described who is in a high vibratory store uh, state doesn't wonder where their stuff is uh we have tried and tried and tried and we're going to try again here today to get you humans to understand that you have to love this process you have to love this journey you have to love this power that you have to create uh and to be in your knowing that you are creating and that you are in control of it you see uh, mm -hmm. uh when a human starts to worry about whether something is coming uh, or where it is, now they are, they're losing their belief. Now they're losing their steam. And now you are extending the time uh, or the amount of time that you will get what it is that you are wanting to get. Uh, we want you to become the believers uh, of your creation, of yourself. Uh, we want you to prove it to yourself, yes? But how are you gonna do this? Uh, you have to learn to start to enjoy this journey. Uh, we wanna use Robin and you, Heidi, a little bit uh, on the journey that you are on. Uh, the two of you, uh, week in and week out, are doing these podcasts. You are doing these YouTubes uh, and you are enjoying it. Uh, you're not getting too far out ahead of yourself. Uh, would you say, Heidi, it is fair to say you don't get on the YouTube and think, uh, I wonder when I'm going to be famous tomorrow or I wonder when uh, this is going to be more valuable tomorrow. Is this something that you are even thinking about? No, mm -mm. you are not. And why is that? Because you are being a creator. You are uh, plugged in, tuned in. You're enjoying what it is you are doing. You're making the contribution you were meant to make, you see. So mm -hmm. we want all of you humans, uh, if you are, as long as you are doing something you are enjoying, we don't want you to be doing something you're not enjoying. But if you are in the process of creating and waiting for something to arrive, we hope that you're enjoying that process as much as you are going to enjoy what is going to arrive. Because it should be saying, uh, and 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 the problem with a human is many times they are doing something they don't want to do uh, and to try to get something that they think they want to get, which oftentimes is money. But it's very important for a human, uh, if you really want to uh, live the life that you really meant to live, to find your passion, uh, to do something, whether you are being paid for it or whether you are doing it in your leisure time, that you love to do, that, that you don't mind doing, and that you would be doing whether you were returned on it or not. Mm-hmm. Yes. Yes. You had also given a few uh, questions for uh, a human to ask of themselves um, to get an understanding of 
why they have a negative bucket or why they keep digging in their negative bucket. Um, and those questions were asking yourself what needs healing, um, what is wanting you to look at it, and what do I want because of it? Yes. Can you give us a little more on that and how that is assistive for humans to ask those questions of, of themselves? Uh, what is a negative bucket, really? It's a stream of consciousness that you found yourself in that you don't really want to be in. See, And what does it offer you? Uh, every stream of consciousness offers you a mirroring back of yourself, you see. And so it's for you to look at whatever bucket you are having uh, and then get the picture, yes, or the snapshot of what it is taken and sent back to you and then decide how it is ap applicable to you, you see. And we know that maybe sounds a little bit confusing. So uh, we would like to use a little analogy if we could. Uh, we are thinking of one, yes, uh, 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 to imagine uh, that you are uh, unhappy in a relationship. Let's use that one, yes. And so uh, as you think about all the things that you don't have, as you feel sad uh, about your loneliness, as you uh, have this vision of what you wish you would have had and the thing you have isn't that vision, you are now uh, creating uh, an opening uh, uh, or a place for you to head in, in this, because you're not feeling good. Right away, the high self notifies you by making you sad. And you think, oh, I'm justified being sad because all these things I'm telling you are true. Yes, we're never going to argue about true and false. Uh, but what we are going to argue about is that you do have a choice how you think about things, you see. And how you think about things is how you create things. And so you were given this opportunity through this one that you are in relationship with uh, to decide what you do want in a relationship. And so as you look at what you don't like uh, and you become the human and you become lodged in it, now you start to sink into that level of consciousness or that flow of consciousness where all of those thinkers are or all of those deposits are, you see. And pretty soon uh, the relationship just starts following that stream of consciousness and it's going down, down, down. And now you find yourself in something uh, very negative that you're not wanting to be in, you see. Uh, you're not going to create anything that you do like. So for example, even if you got rid of the one uh, that is not for you, so you think, yes, because of your way of thinking in the way that you got rid of them, the universe will just replicate another one like them because the mirror or the stream of consciousness that you were in when you got rid of them is the one that is in your uh, purview. Yes. Yeah. So we want you to develop a new purview. We want you to be very specific uh, within yourself, uh, even though you are with someone that perhaps is not meeting your expectations. What do you want because of it? Oh, when I look at him. This is what it makes me want. And then know that you have received this. And keep adding, keep thinking, uh, keep uh, thanking, keep loving the one in front of you, even in his negativism, even in what it is he is presenting to you that you are not liking. Love him for the mirror, for the view of the intensification to you of what you do want. And now here's what happens. We hate giving percentages, but we'll throw one out there. Yes, we would say almost 90% of the time when a person changes their view of another in the way they are viewing them and starts to appreciate them for the mirroring they've been giving them and starts to really put their focus on what they love in relationships and what they really want and what they like about them. What happens is the one that loves them will automatically start to resonate to that. They will start to come up. But if they don't, there's going to be a break. There's going to be uh, a moving apart in the relationship. And you won't have to be the one that does it. You won't have to uh, physically say, pack your bags, get out. Yes, it will be more of a natural uh, unfolding. It will be something that uh, the universe will provide to you uh, an avenue or a way that this thing will move away from you, you see. But most of the time, if you are in a relationship and there is love, there is connection, and there is uh, value between you, uh, the other one's going to come up. Oftentimes, the one that is disgruntled, the one that is not receiving what they are wanting to receive, has very long deposited some very negative responses to the one uh, about them, yes, that they're not liking. And mm -hmm. after a while, the one just starts replicating those or bringing those back to them again and again and again again. So our advice to you would be, you're never going to hurt yourself or anyone else by loving, by complimenting, by adding things that you want to see and see the changes that come. The problem with the human is they want to be right. They want to be justified. And they're very pig headed when we suggest this to them. They don't want to do it. They want to be right. They want to tell you how bad the one is. They want to show you that he has done something. You see, this is what they want. This is where their energy is. We would say, turn that energy around because if even if this one is booted to the curb, 
you got a lot of energy coming back at you in the way that you evacuated him from it, you see. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and that's pretty typical. Um, I see lots of instances in friends and acquaintances where, you know, they've had a partner that was a certain way, maybe drank too much or did work too much or whatever, and they attract a, almost a, a very similar scenario in the next partner, maybe with a slight variation, but still similar. Uh, we don't even care if you have been uh, mistreated, if you have been uh, uh, cheated on or uh, uh, deceived in some way. If you hang on to that, there's another deceiver coming. You see, mm -hmm. the universe doesn't decide about right and wrong. It doesn't say, oh, let us rub your back, you poor thing. It says somehow you created this, you poor thing. So now you have to you have to shift that energy. Now you have to decide, what do I really want? I love a trusting, loving relationship. How do I know it? I had a deceiver over here. Thanks for that. I appreciate you letting me know that that's the last thing I want is to be betrayed. I want to be loved. I want to be valued. I want to be with someone that I can trust, that I can go in and out and never worry about where they are, what they're doing. I want, this is what I want from that, you see. But if you stay in the energy of looking up, checking up on them, uh, calling and seeing if they're up to anything, uh, poking through their email, uh, checking on their phone or whatever else it is that a human does in order to protect themselves, all you're doing is creating, creating, creating more and more deceiving. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Let the yeah. deceiver deceive. Let the one do what they do. And then let the universe re uh, return to them uh, the like match that they have coming. Don't decide to, to judge them and then now decide that you are them in that judgment and have that coming to you. Right. Yeah. So this next question is kind of... Um, a two-parter. One is my uh, possible assumption. I don't know if it's right or not, but you talk often about um, just dropping the bags and choosing, you know, to feel good and to not let stuff weigh you down. And then you also um, talk about masters and how masters can be in the face of something negative and they uh, are able to acknowledge it, but then shift their focus to somewhere good. They don't hold on to it. So my question is, isn't that really kind of, um, is it always that way? Like, for instance, do we ever really drop our bags or is it that we just get better at um, not allowing them to hold our energy? You know, because you said everything that's created in our universe is always there. We can add to it, but we can't take stuff out. So is when you speak about dropping bags, is it really just like a master does where we're just shifting focus? We're not actually getting rid of anything. Uh, when we talk about dropping bags, let us be clear what we're talking about. We're talking about anything that you are holding as a human, uh, as a justification or an excuse for the life that you are living. And most of the time, a life that you're living, things that you are not wanting or liking, you see. Mm -hmm. This is what we are talking that you have in your bag. Yes. And so this can be decided at any point to be accountable, uh, to know that you are not being victimized, to know that there is nothing random happening, that you are not somehow being opposed upon uh, negatively and it is of no fault of your own. Uh, this is what you have in your bag, you see. And so uh, we could try to go back into those into those belief stuff. Uh, belief systems or perceptions that you hold, that you decided to hold, or we could decide just not to hold them anymore. And that's what we're speaking about in the bag, you see. A human just decides, uh, uh, I could decide that uh, I had an uncaring and unkind mother, or I could decide that I benefited from that and I became a very kind and caring mother because of it. And I love the one for showing me the opposite of it, you see. So these are the ways that you have of looking at things. And this is how people choose what they put in their bags. Some people, every time something bad happens, they try to justify it. They try to victimize themselves. They try to make an excuse for themselves why they have what they have. Instead of being the master who decides to perceive the situation in a way that is to his benefit rather than perceive it as the human in his detriment. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. So, so in a sense, then what, if I'm interpreting what you said, right, it is kind of like, um, dropping the bags is, is kind of the same thing as becoming the master. It is. Yeah. 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 Yes. 
you are correct. Yes. Uh, the master just knows uh, uh, that when he hangs on to experiences, he is, he's losing his force. He's losing his creative potential. He's moving away from his source. So he decides very quickly, what can I do to implement my source? Well, I can pick uh, and I can decide right now why I had this experience, how it benefited me, even though it hurt me, and what came from it. You see, there we are going to tell you something. Uh, maybe we have told you. We don't know. Yes. But there's not a single experience that's right or wrong. There's nothing that you are going to experience in your life that you are not personally benefiting from or needing the experience of. And this is what the master knows. The master doesn't say, oh, poor me. Why did this happen? He knows that what he experienced he needed to happen. And so this is how he is able to detach from it. And this is how he is able to look for the gem in it, look for the creative value in it. And what can he uh, gain from this experience? Well, uh, there are lots of things that we gave you one example uh, of one thinking they could think I was victimized by my mother. I was uh, ripped off getting a poor mother. Yes. Uh, I don't know what it was like to have a decent mother. They could go down this road and then they would be the creator of that. Then this would be what the universe would send them more and more relationships so that were not to their liking more and more unfulfilling relationships is all they would be calling for in this way. Or they could say the opposite. Yes. Uh, uh, this one filled a nice role, uh, really showed me exactly what I don't like. I am appreciative for it. I am going to pick this way to be now because of it. This is what I'm adding. This is what the universe is doing. We told you before, what are we doing? We're transmuting energy. We're receiving all the charges of energy. We don't care if they're good or bad. We're not labeling them, but we're raising them uh, to the highest value that we can. And we've told you that as a master, you have this ability. You can decide right now, right here on the earth plane as the master to transmute that energy to decide when you have a negative experience this is how i'm going to view it you see mm -hmm. yeah i was listening to another podcast and they were speaking about beliefs and a lot of our beliefs are formed from the home the homes and the parents that we grew up in and you know you might have a belief about something and your neighbor might believe differently about it and this person up the road different again and so it's a really good idea to kind of go into um, some belief patterns that you've held for your life and really ask yourself if this is really something you feel or if it's just something that you've adopted from someone else's beliefs. And then system. we would also add to that, Heidi, uh, it is a good practice you are suggesting, but we would add, how does this belief serve me? You see, mm -hmm. there are beliefs that serve you. There are beliefs that actually uh, inspire you or that cause you to grow, you see. Mm -hmm. uh, and, and everything really uh, is, a, is a belief to some degree, uh, just thought upon and then believed and then uh, form is received by it, you see. Mm -hmm. So we like the idea of uh, looking at what your beliefs are and then decide how it is serving you. Is it is it holding you back in fear? Is it causing you to be uh, not uh, the person that you would really like to be uh, because you are following something that you have viewed or seen another do? Or uh, is it something else? Is it is it a belief that uh, someone has taught you that you can do anything, that you do not need to be fearful, and that uh, your life is going to unfold uh, in front of you exactly the way that it should unfold in front of you? They are These are all available to you, but uh, don't do it blindly. Do it feelingly. Mm -hmm. Yes. Yeah. Yes. I've mentioned before that I feel repetition is hugely important because we all may know this information from reading it, or it sounds familiar when you hear it again, but just the repetition of hearing it over and over really allows you to infuse yourself with it and um, become it more when you're hearing it a lot. Um, can you elaborate? Because a lot of the stuff we talk about has you know, similar messages from week to week. And can you just discuss from your perspective why you feel that's important for humans to hear stuff over and what benefit it is to them? Yes. Uh, 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 what are we doing really? Uh, anytime we are learning, anytime we are listening, uh, we are expanding our consciousness. 
It's what you're doing, you see. Uh, and we would tell you that uh, you can never expand your consciousness enough in the form of love, in the form of positivity. And that's what we're really doing week in and week out. And although uh, some of the transmissions may uh, travel along the same vein, uh, we use different examples or situations or even analogies that can assist a human where they might be stuck because sometimes there's a block in a human and they haven't heard us the first, first time around. But then uh, perhaps through a guest question, uh, perhaps through a question between Robin and Heidi uh, or uh, a podcast that has come out, uh, in a story that was told, uh, the human uh, slips out of that state of being trapped in that energy that they were not able to move from and see themselves a little bit clearly in that in, in that exchange. So that's the reason for it, really. Uh, we would tell you that uh, all spirituality and books on spirituality that people are reading are touching on similar principles or teachings. And all of them are energetically written a little bit differently, but they are still the same material. But yet, uh, from human to human, it will vary greatly on which ones will be opened up by it or touched by it. So uh, it is oftentimes uh, the uh, connection between the channeler uh, themselves and uh, the high self of the ones that are at the meeting, we would tell you, that are listening, uh, that is creating this connection or uh, this ability, really, uh, to assist them in reaching these goals that they are wanting. Uh, uh, it's very important uh, that a human... Uh, especially in the early stages, uh, if they have been trapped in uh, belief systems and negative emotions, whether it's from their upbringing, some of them even past life, we've told you, lineage, yes, that you would listen to this information over and over again. And you it's like filling uh, your garden with beautiful flowers or uh, uh, making your house smell really nice. Yes, all of, uh, but then we would say, uh, why light a candle? You've lit a candle before, you see, but why do you light a candle? Because it creates an atmosphere. Uh, it smells good. Uh, it makes you feel good when you look at it. This is why we're here, you see. We are a candle. We're the same, you see. We uh, light up, yes, and we let those that want to follow us feel good. We want them to come along with us and remind them that we are setting the tone. We are setting up the atmosphere uh, for them to meet themselves in that high place where they can manifest the lives that they came here to have. Mm -hmm. And, you know, you when you're doing an individual uh, session with someone um, and being in that energy of you guys, that high vibratory energy, it it helps lift them. Is that also the case when you're speaking like on a YouTube, a recording that maybe somebody three, four months from now are, is going to see this recording? Are they going to have that benefit of the high vibration coming through the recording? Yes, yes. Uh, 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 as you have uh, read the book, the Yamoto book about water, yes, and has people have spoke to water and has changed the water the way that it freezes, you understand, yes? Mm -hmm. Uh, this is what happens. It, it creates an atmosphere uh, uh, that is changing. Uh, this is a vibratory level uh, that will uh, dominate or lift a human uh, from their present uh, state if they are lower than the one that we are in. Nine times out of 10, they are. Yes. Mm -hmm. So, uh, yes, uh, there is. Uh, uh, we remember, Heidi, uh, we believe it was either you or your Paco, yes, told us uh, the story. And we would concur that uh, in the Egyptian times, they uh, infused the water with many of the teachings. Is this correct? Do you remember this? Oh, story? yes. Uh -huh. yes. So, uh, here again, uh, this energy is lasting. It is something that uh, can be transferred or uh, taken on. Uh, but nothing is put upon you without your agreement to it. So as you listen to it, uh, as you decide for yourself whether it resonates to you or not, uh, and then as you agree to it, now you become united, you see. Okay. Yes. All right. So in answer to your question, yes, uh, it does have a lifting effect. Uh, and sessions, we would tell you, uh, people have a long-lasting effect. Uh, we... Uh, the way we do it, yes, the way that we channel uh, is that we introduce or bring back the high part of themselves that perhaps they have been a little separated from for a while. And when they feel that uh, connection, when they feel that aha moment of this is what I was meant to be, this is how I was meant to feel, uh, and this is what I want to do, uh, they very quickly come up and meet themselves. And it is a very lasting uh, meeting, we would tell you. Yes, yes. Well, thank you for all the good answers today. 
Uh, you can always email questions or if you want to be on the podcast, or I'm sorry, on the YouTube or um, just comment, you can email me, Heidi, at athenaintruth.com. Uh, thank you, Athena. Thank you, Robin. Um, we enjoyed our talk today and we look forward to seeing you again next week. Uh, we are grateful. Uh, good day, Heidi. Good day.